Indie Mogul. This episode of Indie Mogul is brought to you by Friday the 13th, now playing. Hey, I'm not from around here, but I'm looking for my sister. She's gone missing. Have you seen her? She ain't missing. She's dead. This place is called Camp Crystal Lake. Sean Cunningham came up with the idea for Friday the 13th in response to 1978's Halloween. And boy, did he hit a home run! The franchise has spawned 11 movies, a television series, several original novels, comic books, and video games. And of course, there's all the merchandising, which has brought in over $125 million alone in sales so far. Now that's a lot of blood money. Naturally, with the horror genre enjoying a renaissance these days, New Line decided to reboot the franchise a la Batman and James Bond. And they're giving it all the respect that the highest grossing horror franchise of all time deserves. Yes, we're talking an all-star horror movie-making lineup. Freddy vs. Jason screenwriters Damian Shannon and Mark Swift, horror producers extraordinaire Michael Bay, Andrew Foreman, Brad Fuller, as well as Marcus Nispel, the director of the successful reboot of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. As for in front of the camera, who's playing Jason? Why, it's stuntman Derek Mears. Oh, uh ah, change the picture. Oh, that's better. This is the male lead, Jared Paladecki, from the CW's popular show, Supernatural. I'm sure teenage girls across America will be looking at the screen screaming, not the face! Jason's killed a lot of famous people. Can you guess who? Take a few moments to think about it, but first, I'll give you a hint. They're all a few good men, so think back in time and try to recall the history of violence when Jason turned these lost boys into ghosts. February 13th. You're watching Indie Mogul. Kevin Bacon, Crispin Glover, David Cronenberg, Corey Feldman, and Tony Goldwyn have all met the business end of Jason's machete. And that just goes to show that the Friday the 13th franchise is truly a part of movie history. Now let's go see what everybody thought of the reboot. Is Jason still king? Yeah, definitely. Jason is definitely king. He's indestructible. You really can't kill the guy. I think he was thrown in a rock in the first one. <laughs> he was been blasted into space. He's been set on fire. He has been decapitated. Yeah. He's still king. Jason never dies. Like, if you see his neck, he looks like he's been in the gym. It was really good. Oh, what did you like about it? Ah, it was just, it was like, it was just as good as the original Jason movies. It was awesome. It was, you know I mean, a lot of killing. He just started disrespecting people early from the jump. What was yeah. like the most interesting kill without giving too much away? I like the boat kill. The boat, the <laughs> the boat, boat kill. Yeah. When the Asian guy went to go look for the tools. <laughs> oh, I think that, that was the best. sound good, right? <laughs> Towards the second half of the picture. Yeah, he really goes into overdrive. Jason's ruthless with it. I like that. That's what I like. He gets it done. Yeah, basically. Who are you rooting for? The teenagers or Jason? Jason, of course. <laughs> there was a couple of teenagers I wanted to see make it to the end. They didn't make it. Why do you guys like Jason? What's so special about Jason? I don't like Jason. You kind of love to hate him, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's a killer, but he's kind of has this like legacy. Like, like the whole cha 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 like, like that's like a like like people love hearing that. Do you not... keep the score? Oh, yeah, yeah. Same score, same mask. It's amazing. Yeah. You see him get the hockey mask in this movie. Did they do a good job creating that, that moment? Yeah, it was definitely better than the original one in part three where he kills a fat guy and takes his mask. How is this different than the other Friday the 13th movies? What do they do to reboot it? Um, he runs a little bit more. He's running? Jason never <laughs> runs, right? No more walking down your prey and stalking them till they trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, nobody tripped in this movie. Did you miss the tripping? Yeah. Would you see another one of these? Should yeah, they keep making them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I say so. Like bring them back. Bring Jason back. So what would you say to people who weren't sure if they should see this movie? It's, it's worth the money. You should go see it because he just disrespects people. <laughs> if you like horror films, definitely go see it. It's way better than, than any other horror films that are playing out right now. What do you give this movie on a 1 to 10? A 10. 8 and a half. I give it an 8. 7. I give it a great 8. I would say it's about a good solid 8. 7 and a half, 8. Yeah, I go with the seven and a half or an eight. A rock and eight. Rock and eight. I give it an eleven. So overall, this reboot of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise gets an eight. Welcome back, Jason. And Friday the Thirteenth is the focus of this week's one sentence review challenge. If you've seen the movie, leave a one to ten rating below as well as your one sentence review. The best one will be featured this Sunday on Movie Math. 
Also on Sunday is the deadline for Beyond the Trailer's Oscar vote. Vote for who you think deserves an Oscar, and if you don't like who's nominated, we even have a write-in section. One voter will be picked to win a brand new Blu-ray player. I'm Grace Randolph, and you've just gone Beyond the Trailer.